programmers, welcome back to Introduction of Programming using C++. My name is Alex Louie. At this point in the game, you are really, really in deep in C++. You should be already used to the fact that you have the knowledge of creating loops. You have the knowledge of relational and logical operators, if else, conditional statements, ternary operators, declaration of variables, a little bit of array knowledge. Uh, I did touch upon that with the char arrays and uh, what an array looks like, just the, the theory behind an array. Today, what I want to show you is some applications to an array. So let's suppose that we need to store 10 numbers and compute their sum. Okay, so let's assume that we these numbers are, are they're not coming from input, we're just going to declare them and let's say we just want to do all the even numbers up to let's say 20. Okay, so initially if I wanted to do that and take the sum of the first 10 even numbers, right, then I'd have to declare 10 variables, right, so I would have to do the following, I would say uh, int n1 is equal to 2, and then I can do n2 is equal to 4, n3 is equal to 5, two, I'm sorry, 6, um, so let's do this. Etc. Etc. Right. Uh, so let's just assume that I'm gonna declare maybe ten more. Right. Uh, the point here being is that for every number that I want, I'd have to declare a variable, a separate variable, and then I would have to go and if I want to do the sum, I can say sum is equal to n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4 plus n5 etc etc if I'd had five more numbers and I declare n6 n7 n8 n9 terribly inefficient right terribly inefficient uh, any time that I need to store uh, a list of numbers or a list of maybe perhaps words or floating points or grades that I want to compute and average on uh, I'd have to declare multiple variables for that and we don't want to do that we don't want to do that it's terribly inefficient uh, and for our luck we have something that can handle cases like this so if we want to store a, a list of numbers that have a, a base data type in common. So for for example, in this example, I said, well, I want to I want to store the first. I said the first twenty, but let's just say the first five even numbers, right? So two, four, six, eight, ten, and assuming that they all have the same base data type, they're all integers. So two, four, they're all integers. We want to find the sum. So first, we actually can instead of declaring variables for each number okay what we can do is we can declare an array and this array can store all the numbers that we need depending on how many inputs that we're gonna have so for this particular example let's say we want to store five even numbers okay uh, instead of me declaring five integers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare an array of numbers of size five. Okay. And now I have one variable that represents five integers, and I can access them by their index, where I can set the value of each position or each index by the numbers that I that I want so for example if I was to brute 
force this and not use a loop, which I'm going to show you in a little bit, I would have to do, you know, numbers of zero is equal to two, numbers of one is equal to four, and etc. All right, and again, we can do that, but there's obviously a better way, right? But it, just to start with, we recognize then um, we can store, we can declare one array, and we can store multiple integers into this array. Now remember, when you are thinking about, pro when you're trying to solve problems, you have to make sure that your array, uh, one, you know the base type. So in this particular example, we have a base type, which is an integer. And we know that anything, any input that's going to come in is also going to be an integer. So they have the same base type. Okay, You can have an integer array uh, where you're expecting string input. You know, just just that wouldn't that just wouldn't make sense. Um, you have to make sure that if you are expecting some type of floating point input, uh, input, then you would use a floating point array. So our arrays can be of any base type. So I right now I have an integer. I can also have a double. So if I was expecting some grades, right, or averages. So let's just do averages. Uh, I can do that. So the base type would be a double. Uh, my array name is called averages, and this is my size, which is five. Which really means for both, right? I really can only access index zero through four. Same thing here. I can access index zero through four, which is still five, but you're going from zero uh, to four. Okay. So having said that, then now let's find an easier way to populate the array because as I showed you earlier you can you know you can use the indexes and, and write out five lines of code and just um, populate them that way uh, but what if I had I want to do like 20 even numbers right let's say I want to do the, the first 20 even numbers so that is gets a little more tedious because then I'd have to say numbers of 0 equals 2 numbers of 1 is equal to to four numbers of three is equal and blah 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 and we'd have to write about 40 30 lines of code which we really don't want to do that so that's why we have looping okay so I can easily do this in a while loop and I can store the first 20 even numbers in my array okay so let's do that store the first 20 even numbers in my array numbers Okay, so first we need a control variable, so we can say index is equal to zero. Okay, uh, and then we can say while id index is less than twenty, because remember we're never gonna get to index twenty, because now we're gonna go from index zero to nineteen. Okay, so the minute that we hit twenty, we want to break out. Okay, we want to break out of the loop. So now we can have int even numbers and we can start out with two where I can say numbers of index is equal to even numbers and then we can do even numbers is equal to even numbers plus two and I can explain to you what I'm doing in a second uh, but let's let's do this okay so we have our variable called numbers, which is an integer array. Then we have an index, which we're going to iterate through and go over each index in the variable number. So remember, you have a big, big, big box with 20 little boxes uh, that you can store values in. Okay, so when I loop. I start at index 0, okay, and when I say numbers of index, I'm actually, this in the first iteration, okay, on the first iteration, this really means, so let's write that down here, so first iteration, 
you're really saying numbers of what's the initial value of IDX? Well, it's zero, right? So it's zero, and that equals even numbers, which is two. Okay? So that's the first iteration. The second iteration, what's going to happen is we're going to actually execute this even number. So even numbers will now turn to 4, right? Because it'll be 2 plus 2 and then assign that to itself. It'll be a 4. On the second iteration, right, um, we actually have a problem here, which I didn't, which I didn't take note. We are not incrementing the index. So what's going to happen if I leave this like that, then I will always be at index 0 right because there's nothing incrementing this up and I'll never move to my other boxes in my array okay to my other boxes in my array so what I need to do is I can just uh, do a IDX plus plus here okay so that will increment my index by one okay so on the first iteration we'll still find we have numbers of zero is equal to two and then on the second iteration, okay, so second iteration, at this point, now IDX is 1 because we've incremented it by 1. So then we can say numbers of 1 is equal to, and it's going to be 4, okay, because uh, previously we added 2 to it, right? So on the second iteration, on my f first index, uh, second element, I'm going to put the number four in there. After that happens, then we execute this again, right? So it's gonna say number even numbers plus two. Even numbers is four, so we are going to add two to it, so it's gonna be six. Okay? And then we're also gonna increment IDX by one. So when we jump back to the top of the loop, it's going to say is two less than twenty. It is. So we're going to execute the body again. So on the third iteration, we have numbers of 2. This represents IDX, right? This represents this here. And we increment, we assign this to the value of 6. Okay, because 6 was what we incremented even numbers to previously. So as we go through each iteration, we are actually going to populate our array with the first 20 even numbers okay first 20 even numbers now how do I see this array so now if I want to print out the array so if I want to print out my array uh, I can't simply just do that okay if I do that what C++ interprets numbers to be is actually in the address the offset of the address of where numbers array starts. So remember, an array is a location in memory and you're going to have different allocations for each box for your array. So in this particular case, we've declared a numbers array that has 20 boxes. Each box is an integer, so each box is going to take 4 bytes, okay? So you would multiply 20 times 4, that's 80 bytes that you're taking up. And having said that, if I try and print out the numbers array by just saying C out, uh, what's going to happen is C++ says, okay, I know the numbers, I represent numbers as the starting address of where my array starts in RAM. So if I try and compile this, okay, you're going to see here this weird hexadecimal uh, number that's actually the starting address of where this array starts in RAM meaningless to you meaningless to you it's just you just have to realize that C++ and C++ or any programming language an array uh, when you actually wanna see the if you wanna see the value of an array like this it really is interpreted as the starting address of where numbers start if I want to see the individual, the individual elements in the array, then I would have to do it in a loop. Okay. 
So what I've done here is I have declared, I haven't declared, I have in reinitialized IDX to zero because I want to start again at zero, okay? Because I already have an index here. And then I'm going to go all the way to 19 because we got to go from zero to 19 and that'll give us a 20 elements. And by doing that, okay, I'm sorry, here, uh, on the first iteration, I will print out whatever is in the zeroth index. We increment the index by one, do a compare. Second iteration, is one less than 20? Yes, it is. Print out whatever is in the first index, okay? Increment the index by one, do two is two less than 20 yes so and for each element that I'm printing out I'm actually setting a field width of three okay so now if I compile and run this then you'll see this result where I have the first 20 even numbers so I have two four six eight ten all the way up to 40 okay all the way up to 40 Okay, so what, what did we do in this lesson? We first populated the array with a bunch of even numbers. Okay, file denoted by this. And then we want to see a result. We want to print out the result of our even number array so that we see that our even numbers are indeed the numbers that we expect. And we did this with a second loop. Okay, we did that with a second loop. Now, if you want to try this at home, why don't you try and populate the array with the first 20 odd numbers and then print it out and see see what you come up with okay you can always send me your comments at parttimeadjunct at gmail.com or you can uh, visit me at www.parttimeadjunct.com thanks and I will have more lessons on arrays how to count uh, find the max min count the number of elements in an array and all the good stuff hope to see you soon thanks happy programming